Hey, welcome back into today's video. We're going to be talking about something that, well, I feel like you should see. Mainly that Gabby Hanna has said on multiple occasions that she fakes things for attention and views, which honestly I, I had already assumed. And this reminds me of Trisha Paytas. I thought this would be an interesting video where we go through and we break down the similarities between Trisha Paytas and uh, Gabby Hanna in today's video of exploring YouTubers. By the way, you're looking pretty good today. Keep doing whatever you're doing. <laughs> if you're unfamiliar, Gabby Han is a YouTuber with over 4.49 million subscribers. She's just come off of uh, doing multiple video series where she was talking about everyone who has ever done her any type of wrong at all. Trisha Paytas is a YouTuber with over 5 million subscribers who's also come off of her own uh, set of videos where she was talking about some things that she was involved in. Um, I did a whole three-part series on this. If you guys are unfamiliar, it'll be in the pinned comment. Firstly, I want to go back to Trisha Paytas' YouTube channel. Let's go to the About. And as you can see, it says, I'm Andy Kaufman. And I think it's very important to understand who this person is. We'll just copy and paste here. Andy Kaufman was an American performance artist and wrestler. While often called a comedian, Kaufman preferred to describe himself instead as a song and dance man. He has sometimes been called an anti-comedian. Kaufman was quoted saying, I am not a comic. I've never told a joke. The comedian's purpose is that he will go out there and make you laugh with him. My only purpose is that I will try to entertain you the best that I can. You see, when I do a show, I like people to feel as though it's they're in my house, in my room, and I'm doing, they're my guests, and I'm doing the show for them. And I'm entertaining them as though they were in my house. Before his passing, Andy Kaufman left an impression on everyone who knew him or saw him perform. Depending on who you ask, he was a genius, or he was crazy, he was hilarious, and pushed the boundaries of comedy. Even when he passed, people didn't know if this was serious or not, because Kaufman often spoke of faking his own passing as a grand hoax, with rumors persisting. And often, uh, Kaufman's uh, material seemed to blend and merge in with reality to where people could not tell if he was uh, joking or not. And this is somebody that Trisha Paytas has idolized and based their career around. I'm not Trisha. I know you guys watch my YouTube videos day in, day out. I get a lot of hate. But it's okay, because you hate Trisha, and I'm not Trisha. Now, I can't really come out and say this, and the world won't even know until May 8th, 2013. I'm Andy Kaufman. Now, I've actually said it on my YouTube homepage, and very few people have caught on. This is all a disguise. This is all part my and it's working. Andy Kaufman's not dead. He's alive. On multiple occasions, Trisha has said that they don't completely understand who they are, and so they take bits and pieces from events and people to construct their own ideal mental image. I have no identity of my own. This is interesting. I never had an identity growing up. I have an identity that um, so I think I don't know who I am. So I become other things and other people. Probably why I cosplay and dress up as other people because that's who I learned from. These movies make me me. I really don't know who I am as a person. So it's sad and exciting at the same time. <laughs> I just know I find comfort in things. I know I see things on TV and I want to be that. And I like model my life after that. And I find things to imitate my life because I don't know what I like. So my core watching Darcy and Stacy. This is a show on um, Discovery. And it's about these two twin sisters who date who've dated a lot of foreign men and now they're each married to foreign men and they have this like these thick Eastern European accents and like it reminds me a lot of me and Moses like the girls remind me of me and the guys on the show remind me of Moses in like this weird way it's like if you watch it out you might be like no not so whatever but like I watch it and I'm like okay this is my life but it's not but I'm modeling it that because I don't know the structure that my life is supposed to be without seeing something on TV. And on other occasions, they said that they don't fact check things or they misremember things, which to me translates to making things up for clicks and views. And this is something that Trisha and Gabby both have in common. This lying thing has come around recently. They Trisha lies so much. There's a difference between misspeaking, hearing things and not getting all the facts right, not fact checking and also, uh, versus sharing a tr something you know to not be true for the malicious intent of tricking someone or, or making someone look bad. And so I, I get stories mixed up. I hear things from people and I don't fact check. And that was ultimately why I should never have had a podcast. I should never have been on front of me. I recently watched the video by Inabber. 
which sent me down a rabbit hole to make this video that you're watching right now. And I do highly suggest this video. It's got some really good humor and it's just a kind of just it's a change of pace, so I'll put that also in the pinned comment. There was an article released by BuzzFeed titled, Why is everyone so mad at Gabby Hanna? Where within this article, they did an interview with Gabby Hanna where she stated this. I finally feel like I'm in control, she said. It's a lot easier to cope with people hating you when you're fanning the flames. So you might be wondering what this actually means. There was another drama with a fellow YouTuber named Rachel Oates. Rachel is a YouTube book reviewer who made a multi-part series about Gabby's poetry book, Adult Lessons. Obviously, Rachel's review of Gabby's poetry book, well, it was pretty critical. And despite this, Gabby decided to send her a copy of the second book to review. Why would she do this? Well, I'm glad you asked. She states in the interview, long after her review of Dandelion went live, she claims this too was strategic. I never start drama to support stuff, but if there is drama, I will capitalize on that opportunity to promote something. Gabby said, I'm going to take advantage of a moment. Indeed, she started releasing new music a few weeks after reigniting this fight. So Gabby does these things at the expense of others, though she could be possibly in on the, uh, the strategic plan the other people aren't, and they're experiencing real emotions. And this is not the first time that Gabby's done something like this. Usually people, we, well, we already know that if there's, a, if there's something that she's fighting with somebody about, it's for drama to stir up attention for views about something that she is fixing to release. Gabby portrays this as some sort of genius that she has and things she just genuinely does on purpose because she's so smart at going viral. I might as well do whatever the F I want because guess what? The views are up. You're going to listen to the effing album because it's about the stuff that you guys want to hear about. You're going to watch my series. You're going to read my book and you're going to effing obsess over every movie that I do. You're going to effing pay for my Patreon to see my private content. She actually posted on Patreon bragging about this and how she can go viral whenever she wants. Titled, I'm concerned for the world. The fact that people can't figure out I'm trolling in my TikToks is astounding. Like I'm doing the same stuff I did in Call Me Crazy and Shut Me Up LMAO. I'm doing the same stuff I did on Musical.ly just in regular time. If there's one thing I know how to do, it's be viral. You think the girl who's been made fun of for her nose by the entire internet doesn't know what she's doing when she sings with her nose rubbing against the pop filter? Or when I stare dramatically into the mirror for a silent five minutes? Or when I say I'm going to F both your parents and the one person you love. That one's still one of my favorites because of how people got personally offended because they know I could. In fact, F both their parents and the one they love. It feels good to be in control. L-M-A-O. And then on another occasion, she actually brags about this in video saying, So I just tried the one thing that I've never tried before. And I just fought back. I played their game. I started speaking my mind. And of course, that came with more hate. It came with more backlash. A lot of people saying, I've lost it. Or <laughs> vultures swarming for their pound of flesh. But I wanted that. For the first time in my career, I actually wanted that. It was going to happen with or without my consent eventually. It always does, every couple months. So I would just rather be a little bit in control of it. I feel like everybody has used my name and my life and my trauma for profit long enough and it's f***ing my turn. So I turned it all the way the f*** up. If I'm being completely f***ing honest, it made me feel really powerful to make so many people talk about me at my whim to go viral with little to no effort at all. So we have Trisha who fakes things purposely, exaggerates themselves, and fans the flames. This is something that both Gabby and Trisha have both admitted to, but another thing that they've both done is blame their actions on their mental health. An article on Insider released March 17th, 2020 says, Trisha Paytas caused havoc on the internet once again when she posted a YouTube video called Meet My Alters. In it, she claimed that disassociative identity disorder, short for did, a psychiatric diagnosis formerly known as multiple personality disorder, was something that she had. She made this video despite having no formal diagnosis whatsoever, but just rather this is what she felt like was the best fit. And all throughout this video, she said incorrect statements that both hurt people with did and those who wanted to learn more about it. This goes without saying, but spreading ignorance only intensifies stigmas. 
Speaking of this, we also had Gabby do something very similar with ADHD, although I do believe she had a formal diagnosis. This was in one of my videos on 4-22-2021. She said, this weird behavior is because I'm neurodivergent. I've been called weird my whole life because trying to fit into the neurotypical world is very confusing, especially if you don't know you're not typical. On another occasion, spreading misinformation about this, where an actual mental health professional called her out. In another occasion about Trisha Paytas, she says, I realized I used she, her in a tweet. That was not intentional. I just have ADHD. And a lot of times I make careless mistakes because part of ADHD is disordered executive function. Now, I do think it's important for people to know that Trisha Paytas is actually gender fluid. She goes by they, them, and she also goes by a she, her. That's in her TikTok profile, and I've actually had a conversation with her about this, and she's okay with both of these genders. It just depends on how she's feeling that day, so she doesn't expect people to know when her mind changes or not. But the reason I brought this up was to show you that Gabby was most definitely 100% using her mental health as an excuse. I do think it's important for me to say that when it comes to both Trisha and Gabby, that there very well may be underlying mental issues that contribute to some of their actions. I'm not trying to disprove this, only to point out their similarities. On top of this, Gabby's TikTok has several examples of her saying that she isn't crazy while baiting people with behaviors that make her act like she's not mentally well. You do not understand why there's so many comments on my TikToks. That's, that comments from a singing TikTok. I'm not acting crazy. I'm just singing and performing. Like, I don't understand. Oh, okay. That's all. <laughs> One person comments, it's Gabby gaslighting us for me. Another, you gaslight your audience so much. Just in case you don't know, gaslighting is a form of manipulation that occurs in ABUSIVE relationships. It's insidious and sometimes covert type of emotional ABUSC where the bully makes the target question their judgments and reality. Number one, ultimately, the person that is on the receiving end of this starts to wonder if they're losing their own sanity. Uh, signs of gaslighting are no longer feeling like the person you used to be being more anxious and less confident than you used to be, often wondering if you're too sensitive, feeling like everything you do is wrong, always thinking it's your fault when things go wrong, and apologizing often. There are a few more items in this. I'll put this in the pinned comment. So I'm going to bring you up examples of some of her most recent singing videos to show you that she is indeed not acting mentally well. So as you can see, this very much does fall in line with like gaslighting her viewers as in she is seems to be purposely acting not well in her videos. And then when people bring up concerns, she's just like, oh, no, I'm not acting like this way. Uh, I think I never brought up a really good point. Is this actually a joke? Because at the end of the day, how much can truly be planned and actually be for views and attention because I feel like there's too much content here. There's too much of, Ab of Gabby getting mad at other content creators. I feel like it comes to a point of how much of this is genuinely a joke or is this just a thing of Gabby has embarrassed herself on social media and she's now trying to retcon it as some form of genius or where she's putting it out there that she's now this person that planned all of this to get views. I feel like the retcon is more of a plausible thing than Gabby being this manacled genius. So the point of this video was to show you that both of these people say that they do these things on purpose, that they're trolling and not being serious, while at the same time going back on that and blaming their mental health. So I believe it's pretty obvious at this point why these people are so hated on YouTube, and I think that there may be some truth to all the stories that they say. I just hope that they get the help that they need and that no one else is impacted in any sort of negative way uh, by their actions. I hope you enjoyed this going down the rabbit hole of this. Uh, remember to form your own opinions. 
uh, sources will be in the pinned comment. And as interesting as this is, there's always something that's more interesting to me. That's right. You guessed it. I want to know what you think. So why don't you go ahead and leave your creative and interesting responses in the comment box below. Thumbs up for those likes as always, brothers and sisters. I will see you in the next video. That, that felt like a good video. I had uh, a lot of research that actually went into this. So I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, let's get some positivity turtles in the chat. Remember, send no hate to no one. Uh, this was purely for entertainment. And if you like this type of video, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to support what I do here on the channel and get your name at the end of my videos, the link to that will be in the pinned comment. I also want to thank everybody who's donated this year on the fundraiser. I've said this so much, but I am extremely proud of everyone in this community because the rep squad is the best squad. And that's just another way to show that you're repping. If you're not repping, you're getting how you do that. I'll just subscribe with notifications turned on. Be in the comment section after every single video because I'm going to be there. Greg the Cat's going to be there and the rest of the Squad community as well. And I expect to see you there too because this channel loves you. Now it's time to go running. Greg, you want to go?